Hey everyone, Andrikats here and first of all I would like to welcome any new subscribers, so welcome to the farm. Here you will find mostly WoW related content from guides to a bit of lore videos and whatever else I decide to create along the way. Okay, so Dragonflight is almost here and since I already have done a bunch of other videos covering the dragon leaves of each zone, I decided to smash everything together into one big bowl of salad. No, I mean dragon leaves, obviously, duh. So it might be easier for you to navigate, you know? Obviously, if you want, you can go watch each video I made covering one particular zone at the time, but I feel it might be easier for some of you to just have it in one go. So at the current state of beta, there are a total of 48 dragon glyphs scattered throughout the dragon isles, and some of them are a bit harder to reach compared to others. So I'll do my best and try to guide you to each one. Before we get started though, please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash andrikatsgames, where I'm mostly streaming World of Warcraft. Check out my social media as well if you want to know when I'm going live. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start. The main reason we want to find all of the dragon glyphs is to unlock all of the dragon riding talents. Passing through a dragon glyph, which looks like a big yellowish golden coin, will give you one talent point to spend at the dragon riding talent tree. You can easily get access to the tree by clicking on this icon right here, attached to the left side of your minimap. The more talents you unlock down the road, the more perks your drag will have, which long story short equals to faster traveling and basically more fun. Starting with the Waking Shores Dragon Glyphs, we have the Ruby Life Pose 1, which is in the northeastern part of the map and it's sitting on top of a cliff to the south west of the Ruby Life Poles. You can start off by finding a tall statue or something to sit on from the Ruby Life Pulse area and jump towards the hill. Second glyph is in the Obsidian Bulwark towards the west side of the map on top of a tall rock and what I did exactly is I flew a bit higher and then I dove down to reach the glyph. I mean you could reach it from the ground, it's not a problem, um, it's not really that high and it's quite easy to get there. Before we continue on to the rest of the glyphs I want to share a very useful tip with you. If you already saw my previous videos though you can skip ahead, but if you haven't then hear me out. Okay, so as you progress through the quests in the Dragon Isles, you will naturally unlock more dragon riding abilities as you go. But there is one particular move you want to focus on unlocking ASAP, and that's the Whirling Surge. When you are using this ability, you can reach very high places without much effort, compared to the normal Skyward Ascent, which doesn't really boost you a lot. Whirling Surge is a quest reward from Caligos while doing the main campaign in the Azure Span. The earlier you manage to unlock this, the less time it's gonna take you to get all the glyphs, and not only that, it's also gonna help a lot down the line with traveling from one zone to another and save you lots and lots of time. Then, for the Obsidian Throne Glyph, head west to the Obsidian Citadel, the Black Dragonflight's throne. These winds that I'm taking are unlocked from the Onaran Plains quest line, so if you don't have access to them already, you will get them, don't worry, after completing the quest line in the Onaran Plains. Basically, passing through a wind will give you a little bit of push, and it's even visible in the minimap. This dragon glyph is located above a lava pool, quite high in the air, so if you don't have many dragon riding talents unlocked by that point, um, just take it the slow way and work your way up there. What I mean is land whenever you can, wait for your vigor to recharge and continue like so. It doesn't matter if you fall, just find a good place to land and wait until you have enough vigor to try again. If you do happen to have the Whirling Surge ability though, you should actually use it because it really pushes you a great distance and if you aim it upwards it will skyrocket you very high up in the air. I didn't have it at the time of recording so I went the slow way. But in any case, if you have it unlocked, then definitely use it. Next glyph on the list is located in the Skytop Observatory and it's hovering on top of a tower. If you don't have many talents unlocked, you might need to make one or two stops, depending, um, to reach the top. Also in this flight path, you can find another one dragon glyph, the Skytop Observatory Rostrum. 
As indicated by its name, this one is located near the rostrum of transformation, which is basically this thing over here where you can go and change the appearance of your dragon and customize it however you like. Moving on to the overflowing spring dragon leaf, this one is located again on top of a hill in kind of like a, the middle area of the zone, so start your way upwards and land as high as you can and continue like so. Thankfully there are a lot of places you can land and you can slowly reach your target. Obviously the more talents you have unlocked by now, the less time it will take you to reach there. Next glyph is the Lifebinders Observatory on the north part of the map, again on top of a tower. It's not very high to be honest and you will manage to reach there in no time. Another easy glyph to find is in the crumbling life archway and it's beneath an arch in the area. It's not that high and it's very very easy to get. Moving on to an equally easy glyph to get, this one can be found in the Wingrest Embassy to the north side of the map on top of a small broken tower. There is really no need to come as high as it did because I thought it would be a bit higher but when I saw it, it was actually very very close to the ground. Not too far from here you can find the Dragonheart Outpost Glyph which is located inside a broken tower. And with that we have arrived to probably the hardest glyph to get from the zone, the one sitting on top of the highest peak of Scalecrapper Keep which is in the northeast side of the map. It's significantly higher than the other one so, so it might prove a bit of a challenge to get there. To be honest I did struggle a bit the first time around so I tried again and I did find an easier solution for you. The key component here is to use the third ability, the Whirling Surge. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration, so why not do it like that? There is also a lot of smoke in the area from the lava which makes it a bit more difficult to navigate, but as long as you aim upwards you should be fine. So what I did exactly is I scoured the sun one or maybe two times and then I'm doing a rolling search to build a lot of momentum and reach the highest I possibly can. By doing it with this way, it will take one, maybe two minutes top. I mean, it's doable without the whirling search, don't get me wrong, but it will take a significant amount of time and a lot of patience. So yeah, if you want to save some time, follow the way I did it. And that's pretty much it, the final 12th dragon glyph is at the Flash Frost Enclave, which is hovering in midair very close to the ruby life pools. I found that the best way to reach it is by jumping off the ruby life pools, which is at a bit much higher level than the glyph, and simply dive into it. And with that I covered all 12 dragon glyphs of the Waking Shores. At least that's how many they are in the current state of beta. Ok, let's continue with the Onaran Plains Dragon Glyphs. Alright, first glyph on the list is the Emerald Gardens one. It's located at the top of a waterfall near the Shady Sanctuary. You can find it in the west side of the zone. So what I did is I took the stairs from the Sanctuary, went through the Emerald Gardens, took the road up the hill and then fell down to the glyph. Since I got these uh, dragon glyphs a couple of weeks ago on beta, they actually added an achievement now for gathering all of the glyphs in each zone, which makes it a tad bit easier to track your progress. So you know, if you are missing a glyph and you can't seem to find which one, this will help a lot uh, narrowing it down. Second glyph is in the Nokundon Hold and it's sitting at the top of a mountain in the northwest corner of the map. So it might take you a few leaps until you get um, all the way up there. Also don't forget to take full advantage of the Whirling Search ability. Um, I didn't have it at the time of recording so I went the slow way um, by using Skyward Ascent to reach as high as I possibly can, wait for my vigor to recharge and then try again. But if you have the Whirling Search, don't forget to use it. It will speed up the process a lot. Third cliff on the list is the Mirror of the Sky and it's near a small mountain peak, but not directly above it, just a bit to the side of it. It's in the southwest of the zone, so you will probably want to reach at the top of the peak first and then one or two skyward ascents should be enough to get you right through the glyph. 
Not too far from here is the glyph number 4. This one is in Oniri Springs and it's hovering above a waterfall next to a mountain. I first landed on top of the waterfall and then waited for my Vigor to recharge and use Skyward Ascent to eventually reach the glyph. Now moving on to the fifth glyph, this one is located at the northeast side of the map at Ruzathar's Ridge. Seriously, who comes up with this kind of names? Anyway, this one is on top of a tower and I tried to approach it from Thaldrasus. And I know, you might be wondering now, okay, why did I choose to go from this direction? Well, mostly because Thaldrasus is a bit on a higher level, so it helped me get to the top of the tower in one swoop. So basically I didn't have to make a lot of stops to get there and I'm a bit of a lazy peon. Next dragon glyph number 6, this one is called Zar Skeleth and this one is on top of a broken tower, easily reachable from the ground with probably two skyward ascents. Uh, there is also a lying statue on the ground nearby which uh, makes it a bit easier to find. Now to the southeast corner lies the seventh glyph, the eternal Kurgansua. It's near the highest peak so Try to get as high as you can um, on the mountain and then try to reach it. Next dragon glyph number 8 is near the windsong rise and you can find it hovering above a large rock. There are a lot of rocks right beneath it along with a swirl in the middle, so I would say it's not really that hard to spot. And it's also not particularly high this one, you can reach it from the rock below, land there, wait for your vigor to recharge and then attempt to reach it. Moving on to the ninth glyph in the Onaras Roost, this one is sitting on top of a large statue of Onaras. Onara, who the zone was named after, is the wild god of the wind and she appears as an eagle spirit form. You can even find her on your way up the mountain inside a bird's nest. This dragon glyph is the highest of the zone, so maybe don't try to go with three vigors as I did because it will take you some time to reach it. You will have to make a few jumps, climb as high as you can each time and then wait for your vigor to recharge before um, attempting again. This statue can be found in the Marukai area towards the north of this zone. I think it's quite safe to say that you won't have any problems finding this statue since it's on top of the highest mountain you will encounter in the area. So what you need to do is try to reach the top of the head of the statue then one scout ascent should be enough to get you right through the glyph. Though if you do have a couple of talents unlocked by this point and you have already learned the whirling search, which I did mention a couple of times now, reaching the top should prove a rather easy task for you. So let me quickly walk you through each step to reach the top by using this ability. First, get to the ground near the mountain and wait until you have at least 4 or 5 vigors ready to spend. Then use two Skyward Ascents to lift up in the air, following by Whirling Surge. As you can see, by using this ability, you really do skyrocket very high up in the air, and if you have uh, a few more Vicor, you can use one or two Skyward Ascents to reach just a bit higher. But whatever the case, just land as high as you can, then do one more Skyward Ascent, following by Whirling Surge, and here we are, right on top of the statue. That wasn't too hard, was it now? If you want to play it safe though, you can land at the top of the statue and then aim for the glyph. Next one is the 10th dragon glyph which is in the Dragon Spring Summit. This one is close to the Fork River crossing next to the Azure Span zone border. It is just beneath this balcony over here between these two skewer gates. Keep in mind that there are a lot of elite mobs above the balcony so beware of that and try not to land on top of the balcony and you should be fine. Moving on to the 11th dragon glyph, the ruby scale outpost. This one is in fact in the waking shore zones so I don't know what the heck is going on here but it's supposed to be included in the Onaran Plains glyph hunter achievement. This one is in midair hovering above a bridge very close to the border between Onaran Plains and Waking Shores. And last but not least we have arrived to the 12th Dragon Glyph 
and this one is called Marwood Fen, which is quite nearby actually from this one. As you go from the Wacken Shores to the Onoran Plains zone, you will see it hovering just above the main road, next to a tree. The view here is actually quite beautiful. Let's move on to the Arjur Span, the third zone you will encounter during your adventures in the Dragon Isles. Alrighty, first dragon glyph on the list is the Cobalt Assembly. This one is on the northern part of the map, very close to the Onaran Plains border. There are a ton of elite mobs in the ground, but this glyph is on top of a tower, so no need to worry about them. If you don't have many talents unlocked, then it will take some time to reach up there, so try to land as high as you possibly can with uh, Skyward Ascent, wait for Vigor to recharge and repeat as many times as you need to reach the top. Just a reminder, you can use the Whirling Surge ability to reach the top in no time. Okay, so second glyph is the Ruins of Karnthor and it's on top of the highest broken tower. So what I did is I started from the Flight Master at Come Nowhere and then I flew over to the tower. I managed to get just a bit lower but it was still very very easy to get it. Moving on to the far west side of the map to the third glyph, the one at the Brackenhide Hollow. This one is next to the highest tree of the area. You can try landing first at the base of the hill and then use two or maybe three skyward ascents to reach the glyph. As you can see I'm bumped into an invisible wall here so I try to evade it. Next the fourth glyph is located at the Imbu area at the south side of the map. You will basically find a waterfall and the dragon glyph is hovering at the top of the second level of that waterfall. Fifth glyph now is at the Carthras fortress inside a broken tower and it's really close to the Ronin's shield. It's not too high from the ground so it's easily reachable. Moving on to the sixth glyph now, the Azure Archive. This dragon glyph can be found in the southwest corner of the map in the Azure Archives. There is a huge platform thingy in the middle, so you can really miss it. So this glyph is hovering near the top level platform. It's not directly above it, just a bit to the side of it. Glyph number 7 now, is the uh, this one is the Lost Ruins, is located at the east side of the map, inside the highest tower in the area. You might need a couple of attempts to reach there, or, as I said before, if you got the Whirling Surge ability, go for it, because you might manage to reach there in uh, one swoop. Eight Cliff, uh, it's the Creek to the Den, which can be found on top of a tree that's been kind of cut in half. And it's located in the west side of the map. Ninth Dragon Glyph is the Zelthrak Outpost. This one is between the Camp of Antonidas and the Camp of Nowhere. You can find it casually hovering next to a pretty high tree and you could possibly land to the hill nearby and then go for the glyph if you are not sure you can make it but uh, manage to get there in one swoop. Glyph number 10 is the Fallen Course and glyph they just recently added in the latest uh, beta build. It's very very easy to get this one. It's at the far north of the Azure Span, hovering just above the ground level, which is just a bit further from the border that connects the Azure Span with Thaldrasus. You will have to pass the Mystic Canyon if you are coming from Thaldrasus and reach the Fallen Course area. Moving on to the 11th glyph of the Azure Span. Um, well, technically this one looks like it's in uh, Onaran Plains. At least that's uh, what it looks in the map, but uh, the Azure Span Glyph Hunter achievement shows that it is indeed incorporated into the Azure Span Glyph, so I don't know, who am I to argue with that? This one is hovering just above the ground level on the road that connects the Azure Span with the Onaran Plains, one of the easiest uh, Dragon Glyphs to reach. And last but not least, we have arrived to the 12th Dragon Glyph, the Vanthros Range, which is at the far northeast side of the map. You will have to pass this uh, huge mountain 
corridor, I would say, over here, and the glyph is just behind it to the right, hovering in midair. And with that, we have arrived to the final zone, the Thaldrasus, which will be the final destination of your leveling experience in Dragon Isles. Alrighty, first dragon glyph of the zone is the Temporal Conflux, which is located at the southeast side of the map. The Temporal Conflux area acts as the seat of power of the Bronze Dragonflight, and it's even indicated by an hourglass on the map. You can find this glyph inside the top of a tower, and this tower is uh, very close to the main structure in the area. Okay, so second glyph can be found in the South Hold Gate at the southwest side of the zone. This dragon glyph is inside the top of the second highest tower in the area. Moving towards the north to the third glyph, the Algithera one. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, this one is on top of a tower in the Algithera's court area. Not too far from here you can find the fourth cliff, the Algithor Academy, which is inside of the top of the tower with the purplish diamond on the top. You can find the glyph hovering just below the roof. Dragon glyph number 5 is at the vault of the Incarnates and it's very close to the raid entrance which you can easily locate from the world map. This cliff is hovering at the left of the raid entrance above a lava pool. Moving on to the sixth dragon glyph now, the Gelicure Outpost. This is one of the recent glyphs they actually added on beta. So this one is hovering in midair above a bridge and it's not that high so it's very very easily reachable. Next is the seventh glyph, the Storm Shroud Peak, which is at the very top of this same name peak. This is one of the dragon glyphs that it will help a lot to use the whirling search ability, which I did mention before. Maybe the previous glyphs weren't so hard to reach, but this one with uh, Skyward Ascend, it's just gonna be a pain in the ass because it's sitting atop this pretty high mountain peak. If you do attempt to reach it with fewer dragon riding talents, or just the basic two abilities, it will take you some time. But with Whirling Surge, it will be so much easier, I mean, look. Moving on to the 8th glyph, the Valdragon one. This dragon glyph can be found hovering on top of the main building in Valdragon, at the seat of the Aspects. You will usually find the dragon leaders chilling here. So yeah, this glyph is on top of this building. Ninth dragon glyph on the list is the Tearhold one. And this one is hovering above a nearby cliff of the Tierhold main facility. Glyph number 10 is the Veiled Ossuary, which is at the far north island of the zone. This one is located inside a, well, probably you guessed it, inside a tower. How surprising, right? Seriously, I think they just added a bunch of towers just to throw glyphs all over them. Next is the 11th glyph, the Thaldrasus Apex. Not to scare you, but this one is by far the hardest glyph to reach, mostly due to the height of the mountain peak you need to reach and many other factors, which is why I did a complete separate video just to cover this one. But um, in a nutshell, this one is located at the very top of the highest mountain in Thaldrasus. The most important thing to keep in mind here is to use the Whirling Surge once again and aim for the snowy peaks or the mountain alcoves that are usually safe spots to land. And basically repeat that a few more times until you reach the top. I started off by approaching the mountain from Tyrholt, so basically the west side. Then I waited for Vigor to recharge and when I was at full capacity I used one Skyward Ascend following by a Whirling Surge and a few more Skyward Ascends to reach the highest I could. My advice will be to leave this glyph for last so you will probably have unlocked most of the talents by that point and you will also have learned all of the Dragon abilities. So I managed to land between these two peaks and again by following the same steps I got to this snowy peak on the south side of the mountain. This is a great spot to reach the glyph in one swoop, 
but in any case you can use the bronze time lock. And if you see that you want to make it to the top, don't panic, just press the button to go back to your portal location and try again. If you want to see a more in-depth explanation of how I did it, you can check the video I made. As I said before, you could use the fourth dragon ability, the bronze time lock, in case you know you messed up. I mean, there are a bunch of invisible walls all around the mountain and uh, not many safe places to land. When you first use the bronze time lock, it manifests a bronze portal in front of you and when you press it the second time, whenever you are in the world, it will teleport you back to the location of the portal. It basically acts like a failsafe mechanism. If you do happen to fall, you can uh, use it and you won't lose any of the progress you made. It's especially very good with the, um, uh, the highest glyphs I mentioned throughout the video. And uh, last but not least, we have arrived to the 12th Dragon Glyph, the Passage of Time. This is also one of the new Dragon Glyphs they added just recently. You can find this one hovering in midair beneath a rock arch before you reach the Temporal Conflux area. And with that, I have pretty much covered all 48 Dragon Glyphs you need to find throughout the Dragon Isles in order to unlock all of the perks for your lovely Drake and thus unlock its full potential. If you got any questions, ask away in the comment section down below. As I said before, you can find additional videos on the Dragon Glyphs up on my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching my content and make sure to drop a like if you have found this video helpful. If you want to support my channel, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay alert. Good luck with whatever you are doing and I will see you all on the next one. Bye!